1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Training for reigning. How many of y'all know the enemy's setting traps for you every single day? Amen. You know, there's a spiritual law that people just don't grab hold of yet. It's called sowing and reaping. What you sow is what you reap. Nobody gets away with it, whether you believe or you don't believe. Whether you're a heathen or a follower. What's happening is anybody who app approves what God disapproves of is sowing to the flesh. That person will reap corruption and will stand before the king. And he, when they stand before the king, the first thing he's going to say is, I do not know you. I do not know you. And you might have called on his name. You may have thought you've been a believer for all these years. But the word even tells us many will come before us and say, well, Lord, I did this for you. I did that for you. I did all kinds of things for you. And you'll say, I don't know you because you practice lawlessness. You approved of the things that I disapprove of. That's why God is shaking the earth right now. He's exposing the religiosity garbage, the doctrines of demons, false religions, all kinds of garbage. He's exposing them now. Why? His purpose is that people will come to the knowledge of the truth that they may be free. There's a difference between management and freedom. People try to manage those demons. They eventually take you over. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, let's speak it. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. In other words, darkness can only dwell in light so long. Then it has to run from it. It says, but you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. And you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you what? Know it and that no lie is of the truth. I want to share something important today because there is a place of position in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, of Christ, where you have the power to know all things pertaining to God's timing, his times, and seasons. There is a place in the spiritual realm that is placed for you. The word says that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. That means you're, there's a place seated. There's a seat specifically for you in the heavenly places, but you must access it. Because, and all of this is because the anointing of God, which says, and you have an anointing and you know all things is in, where you are connected to the throne room of God. You are connected to the presence of God. See, many people never got connected. They've been believers, supposedly believers, for 30 years and never been connected. They've been good people, but they've never really gotten connected. Never. And that's what we call the third chamber of the tabernacle. See, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. This thing that I'm talking about, this position in this place where you know all things pertaining to God's times and seasons because of the anointing, the word eternal means timeless. Everyone say timeless. So in the eternal realm, which is a timeless position, a timeless place, when you access to this place, if you recall, the prophets spoke of things of past. They prophesied. They spoke of things of the past. They spoke of things that are present and things of the future. So you have access to the things that are past, present, and future. In fact, you and I should be living from the future to the present, not from the past to the present. That's what deceives people. That's the difference between religion and relationship. That's the difference between knowledge out of the head and knowledge out of the heart. See, the word power means strength. Strength. So if the anointing is the power and presence and truth of God Almighty, the word power means strength, the word presence means connection. And truth means knowledge. 
So there is power of knowledge. Does everybody get this? There is a power of knowledge. So we have knowledge is power. Now there's three types of power. There's good power, there's evil power, and there's righteous power. All of these are backed by a knowledge. That's why in the garden there was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there was a tree of life which produced righteousness. And too many people are still only eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thinking they're walking right with God, and they are deceived because Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Because if you're a person that's still reacting according to the flesh, that means you're disconnected from the presence of God. Is everybody okay? Look, at this is training because God is shaking. And it's time for people to wake up and examine themselves and quit blaming everybody else for your own garbage. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This power of knowledge comes by the presence of God because of connection. Now listen, in this there, from the presence of God, to know all things means that there's a correct interpretation. Amen? One of the things is they have a correct interpretation of the Word of God. When there's a correct interpretation, it's called understanding. Is everybody with me? So knowledge that is understood, I mean, knowledge that is interpreted and understood brings power. Does everybody get this? It's called knowledge from above when correctly interpreted will bring understanding. When this knowledge is correctly interpreted and understood, it becomes a weapon of strength from above. How many old knowledge can be a weapon? Amen. The power of knowledge. Again, it comes by the presence of God by being connected. And if the knowledge is not understood or correctly interpreted, it means nothing. That's why many people read the Bible without the Holy Spirit. They get knowledge of the head which puffs them up. But they don't get knowledge in the Spirit which humbles them. Hello? Hello? Anybody can tell anybody about Jesus. Even a heathen can tell somebody else about Jesus. But there's a difference of walking in the power of the truth. In the power of the knowledge. That's where the word says, In my name you will cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, speak with new tongues. All of that's the word of God. But see, the problem is, without the Holy Spirit, you can't interpret God's time. Because the eternal knowledge is timeless. Hosea 4, 6. The power of knowledge. Is everybody okay? Do we need to lock the door? <laughs> How many of y'all want to know truth? Amen. Amen. I mean, this is what it's about. There's a desire for in you and I to always want to know what the heck is the truth. It's not some religious thing. We need to erase the word religion. It's relationship. Do you really know him? And did he speak to you today? Would you be able to write down everything God spoke to you today from this morning's prayer? Well, if you didn't go to prayer, how would you know? <laughs> Did you make contact this morning? See, you can't be a first striker without first making contact. How many of y'all is the best to strike first when there's a war going on and get struck later? Amen. Hosea 4, 6. My people are... My people are, my people are, my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. That means understanding. Knowledge is substance. It's substance. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and here it is. Here's the warning. He says, because you rejected my knowledge, I'll reject you from being a priest for me. That's someone's close to him. 
And because you rejected my knowledge, I will reject you for being a priest for me. And because you have forgotten my knowledge or my law of your God, I will forget your children. That's a curse that comes on the family line because our forefathers didn't do the right things with God. And that curse recycles, 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 recycles until somebody finally repents, get right with God and breaks that curse off. You know, see, here's this is where people do not have knowledge or understanding of the knowledge. They just walk around in this world. They're so caught up in this world and not connected above. And they go to church, pay their tithes, and they're good people, but they're still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not from the tree of life. Because if there was life, there would be flowing of life. There's power. There's no fear of death. It's totally different. Proverbs 4. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of understanding of the knowledge from the timeless realm because of the lack of connection to his presence. They become disconnected from his presence. Proverbs chapter 4. Oh, aren't you glad you came today? I'm glad I came today. <laughs> See, when people react, they react to the old man. Amen. See, when you respond, you respond to the new man because he's connected. What does the word say? Don't worry. Don't fear. Don't be anxious. All of those are associated with the old man. Lack of understanding, because they still live out of the head, not out of the heart. God's not first yet. Verse 1, let's speak it. Proverbs 4. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to know what? Understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and lonely, and, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom and get what? Understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from my words of my mouth. So are, are his words written in the Bible? Yes. Is there more than what's written in the Bible? Yes. And only if you're in the spirit can you get that. Other than that, you're just bound by the letter. And you can't get true revelation or illumination. Verse 6. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Understand. See, wisdom tells you when. Understanding tells you how. Verse 8, exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Get understanding. Knowledge is substance. Again, wisdom tells you when and understanding tells you how. That's why sometimes you can get something to put together and you don't need to read the instructions. <laughs> even though you have spare parts. <laughs> Men were created that way. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, happy days. When Jesus wants. Don't get me going now. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Uh, second Peter, I'm sorry. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. <clears throat> the power of knowledge. You know, people go to college and so forth to earn a degree, and they use that knowledge to assist in this realm. 
many people have gone to cemetery school? <clears throat> I mean, seminary school. And they've gotten all this knowledge. But I'm telling you, when you are baptized and connected to the presence of God, everything is released to you. Everything you have access to. Every realm of the spirit you have access to. I never went to college. But I took their exam. <laughs> they did. I, one day, the Lord said, I want you to have credentials. I said, why? And he said, because people are going to ask, basically, oh, we need a little reference here. <laughs> Obviously, he knew he made me radical. And so I, uh, a person from a, a Grace Bible College uh, brought me an entry exam, and I took the entry exam. She said, that's good. Let's get you the four-year college exam. It was 300 questions. And I passed it. I thank God, because I wasn't interested in going to no school. I was already in the school. Amen. You know where my school was? Four hours a day with the Lord. Amen. That's what I spent with him, four hours a day. And whatever else. And he taught me, introduced me to the mentor, the teacher, the tutor. And he began to teach me to read. Because, see, I couldn't even read. I had a third grade level reading. Not that I'm a fantastic reader. There's some goofy words in this thing, you know. I mean, try and mention some of these names they come up with. <laughs> but other than that, the Holy Spirit taught me how to read. I read more books in the first year of being born again and filled with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit used to tell me. He used to explain the words to me. He'd tell me, read this. And then he would tell me what books to read. And one day, I, I said, well, look. He told me, I want you to read this book. I said, wait a minute. It's not the Bible. And he said to me, guy, this person went through 40 years of training that I'm going to give you in two hours. I said, okay, I'll read it. <laughs> and I did. And he began to teach me. Then I had dreams and visions. I was brought to multiple places in the spirit. I saw the return of the Lord. I saw all kinds of things. And he is coming. He is coming. So it's not for just me. It's for everyone. Anyone willing and wanting to get deeper with God. You just got to want it. You got to tell him. And you know what he's going to ask you? Show me. Because most of the time, there's usually a still small voice that says, you're all mouth. Show me. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Oh. Knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. You know, most people don't even know their the covenant with the Lord and his promises. And the enemy just comes and steals all the time because they don't maintain covenant. Just because you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's just the entrance door. You just stepped in. It's not over with. Now you must be trained. You must go through the chambers of the tabernacle. Oh, hallelujah. By which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So if you don't know the knowledge, how can you partake of the divine nature? Amen. You can't. If you don't know the promises and the covenant, how could you partake of the divine nature? You can't. And that means if you can't submit to the things of God, you cannot resist the devil's influence. It's impossible. Oh, but I've been with the Lord 35 years. That's nice. Why are you still do stupid stuff and reacting to everything? Why are you still cussing out of your mouth, approving of the things that are disapproval of God? You're an outer quarter. And you're a carnal Christian. And believe me, God is going to tell you when you stand before him, 
you'd be shaking in your boots if there's any on you. Wondering whether he's going to let you in or not. And this doctrine of once saved, always saved is nothing but from the devil. Amen. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen. Never, never let anyone tell you any different. God's, there's a sign in front. It says justice and righteousness and those who practice such things will enter the kingdom of God. Nothing else. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go a little further. Verse 5. But also for every reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control to self-control, perseverance to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be, never be what? Barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is what? Short-sighted and even blind or to blindness. And he has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these, if you do these, when you see the word if, it means that you must cooperate. Without cooperation, there is no overcoming. If you do these, look at what's next. You will never what? You will never stumble. Look at what follows it. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Knowledge understood in him will bring his divine power, bring his divine nature. Because of your connection to his presence, that brings interpretation and strength. It releases his character in me and you. So it's no longer we that live, but him that live. The new man has been possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen? The power of knowledge. Go to chapter 2 for a second. In verse 20. Chapter 2, verse 20. My people are destroyed for lack of knowing him. You know, again, I always relate this to a, a magazine or a Sports Illustrated or anything to that degree. You know, people read about someone. They can read all the statistics and everything else. So they may know about that person of knowledge, but they've never met that person, which makes it totally different. See, by the Spirit of the living God, you meet Him. You hear Him. You know His presence. You know His unction. He visits you in dreams and visions. You'll be walking down the street. You'll be driving down the road, and the presence of God will just come in your car. And His love will just overfill you. You just start weeping and crying. And He loves to surprise us. He loves the surprises because he always wants you to know that he is there. But so many times we miss the opportunity because he's trying to get us to a place to meet us. But the enemy's influence misdirects us. See, God wants you to be a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. Amen. Amen. Verse 20, 2 Peter 2, 20. Hallelujah. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the what? The than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to know the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog, which means in the Bible, a demonized person, returns to his own vomit, and so, having washed to her wallowing in mire. Again, the enemy of eternal knowledge is pride. I want to say that again. The enemy of eternal knowledge is pride. Remember, there's three types of knowledge. There's good, evil, and righteous. Righteous is eternal. The enemy to eternal knowledge or righteous knowledge is pride. 
Pride is of carnal knowledge. This pride is the bride of evil. I'm going to say it again. This pride is the bride of evil. Again, there's three types of knowledge, evil, good, and righteous. All have a strength, but only one has true power to overcome good and evil. We see this global battle over souls through media, music, movies, magazines, newspapers, always trying to influence good and evil knowledge and not righteous knowledge. I haven't seen a politician to talk about too much righteous knowledge. This influence can cause individuals to step beyond the boundaries preset by the Lord. And they become unplugged or disconnected. And what I mean by that is, I know this is strange, but there's a vision I had this morning, so I'm going to explain it. I, he showed me a person that was plugged into a power source. And the cord was only so long. And there's boundaries that God sets for me and you. And when you step over those boundaries, you go far enough, you get unplugged. And when that person is unplugged, they don't even know they're unplugged. They think they're okay because they have head knowledge, but heart knowledge begins to dissolve. Slowly, slowly, slowly dissolving, dissipating. And see, now they're trying to rely on their own strength and head knowledge, and they have no power over the enemy. They're too easily influenced. Again, what happens when they get unplugged or disconnected? This disqualifies them. I want you to understand, when a person is unplugged, it disqualifies them access to eternal knowledge. God will not allow it until that person repents and turns from their way. It's going to take two things, repentance and humility. And the only access they will obtain is good and evil knowledge. Does everybody get this? This is where we are right now. This is why there's such a battle globally. 2 Corinthians 10. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 4. So this knowledge that is from above, the power of knowledge is actually a weapon. It's eternal knowledge. That's why Jesus used it when he was tempted by the devil. What did he say? It is written. It is written. Every time he was tempted, it is written. He was speaking his own words. Because God doesn't interrupt himself. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Stronghold is a memory lie, something you agreed with in your past and it's still tormenting you today, or you may not even know that it's there, preventing you from advancing. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the what? The knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, weapons of spiritual warfare in strength in the Lord by maintaining connection to his presence, his power, his truth, which is the anointing. To do what? To drive out, to cast down anything that is against the true knowledge of Christ Remember, these influences are bombarding you constantly. They will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And what happens? Or try to nullify the eternal knowledge that's in an individual. And then what happens? A person can no longer overcome. They begin to backslide. And they begin to feed off of other things. That's of the world. They, you know, it's amazing how many... Uh, I don't know if I should go there. But anyways, I'm going there. Um, how many believers 
Now, the, remember that the word believe means to follow. So if you're not a follower, then God calls you a liar. Amen? Okay. Spend more time reading novels than the word of God. Because they're in a fantasy world. Amen? They're not on the plane, right plane of reality. See, there's a place in the spirit where there's a plane of reality. And there's a realm of existence that's placed for me and you. But you must access these things every single day. Live, that's what's walking and living in the spirit realm is. It's different. You see things different. You hear things different. You sense things different. You discern things different. Everything is different because you're living on the plane of reality where God is at. So what begins to happen is you begin to see what he sees. You begin to make choices that he would make choices of. You begin to respond the way he would respond. Does everybody understand it? It's a totally different thing. That's why those who are led by the Spirit of God are called sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians 3. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Training for reigning. The power of knowledge. Man, I was watching um, uh, Judge Kavanaugh get persecuted and crucified. And uh, in, 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 in his... I guess it's, it was job interview. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, these people had a lot of knowledge, but it was all garbage. I didn't hear one thing about anyone saying, well, what does God say about this? It was a bunch of, I mean, they talked all of this lawyer talk. Now, I know the greatest lawyer in, in the universe, and his name is Jesus. And he didn't even talk like that. <laughs> Philippians 3, 7. Somebody there? Let's speak here. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may what? Gain Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained it or I am already perfected, but I do what? I press on or press in, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. See, we want to, there, there should be a desire to reach a level that nothing can compare against the knowledge of knowing him. Anything that is in our way from knowing him must be removed. Does everybody get that? We must be willing to let things go. There might be things we're doing that's interfering with the knowledge and knowing him. There must be things that we must be willing to let go. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Now let's go to Colossians first. Colossians 1. Since we're over here. Colossians 1 verse 9. Yes, we must reach that level where nothing can compare. Colossians 1, verse 9. Let's speak it. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the what? Knowledge, Knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may what? That you may what? That you may what? Walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being 
fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, knowing him. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Wow. Filled with the understanding of his will or his plan. See, that's what grace is. Grace is God's plan. It's not unmerited favor. You earn God's grace. You earn God's favor. Does everybody get it? Grace is God's unmerited love. I've been hearing this preach for such a long time, I'm sick of it. Grace has not, got nothing to do with favor. You earn God's favor. He's not just going to give you the keys to his whatever. Hello? Amen. Would you give your keys to someone that hasn't earned it, to that somebody that doesn't know how to drive? No. Grace is God's plan to escape the deception of the enemy and the wrath of God. Grace is a plan to escape. Does everybody get this? It has nothing to do with the favor of God. It has everything to do with his love. Amen. His unmerited love for me and you, he came. Amen. With him, he brought the plan to escape called grace and truth. Does everybody get that? Good. First Timothy, chapter 6. Oh, you're getting a lot of information today. Whether you agree with it or don't, you'll just have to take that to the Lord. Amen. The word says, for grace you've been saved. Amen. That means you don't have to cooperate with the plan? No. You got to cooperate with the plan. Amen? Why? Because grace is God's plan to escape, isn't it? Amen. That's because of lack of interpretation by the Spirit of God. They interpret the Word of God according to their carnal understanding. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Oh, Timothy, Guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and the contradictions of what is falsely called what? Knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Let the plan of God be with you. Guard against false and temporary knowledge. Have dominion over it. Be able to discern those things. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy 3 and verse 1. Remember, if you don't learn, you will get burned. Let's speak it. But know this in the last days. Are we in the last days? Yes. Perilous times will come. Are you seeing perilous times? <laughs> For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures of, then what? Lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. They have a formula of godliness, but they deny his power. They deny the power. And what does he say? From such people do what? Turn away, don't associate with them because association brings impartation. For this sort are those that creep into households, ministries, 
businesses and make captives of gullible men and women. They load them down with sins, led away with various lusts. Now Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses. So do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. Wow. Now look at verse 7. Very powerful. It says, always what? Learning and never able to come to the truth. Wow. Here God warns us of the increase of influence through false doctrines, deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, false religions. Because of their disconnect to the presence of God, they begin to establish doctrines that are not pleasing to God. They're not according to the interpretation because the Holy Spirit wrote this word. Amen? They are disconnected to the true presence of God and they're never able to come to the person of Christ. Again, he is shaking and judging before his wrath right now. Hebrews 10. Hebrew. Did Hebrew this morning? Yeah. Hebrew this morning. Hebrew too. Hebrews ten twenty six. Oh, hallelujah. Are we ready for this? Can you handle it? Strap in. Lock the door. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For if we sin willfully, willfully, Amen. if we sin willfully, after we have received the what? Knowledge of the truth. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, there's no more covering. You die in that condition, you go to hell. Whether you claim to be a believer or not, there's no covering. It's under willful sin. But a certain fearful expectation of what? Judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Okay, that's old covenant. Here's new covenant. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the spirit of grace, the spirit of the plan? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Well, that just blows all the theology of once saved, always saved. Amen? Without true repentance and humility, there is no reconnect to his presence. You could talk to that person until you're blue in the face. They are not able to hold on to the heart knowledge, only head knowledge. There must be true repentance, a turn, and humility. A cry to God for help for that person to be reconnected again. It's not about works. It's about a true heart cry that says, God, forgive me. You know, when I was out there using, I knew if I died in that condition, I wasn't going home. I knew it. I, never, I didn't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but for some reason, I mean, I wasn't a follower. I didn't know nothing. But I knew that, I, I believed that there was, I didn't even know if I believed in heaven and hell. But for some reason, I knew if I died in that condition, I wasn't going to a good place. But how many of you all know God has a last say? 
He's merciful. Ephesians 1, 15. And then one more scripture. The power of knowledge. It is a weapon. Again, again, knowledge is substances according to the word of God. It's like, it's like bullets you put into a gun. If you don't have the knowledge, how can you put anything, shoot anything? Amen? Verse 15. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And the what? Eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above the principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. In other words, the spirit of wisdom and revelation come by being connected to the presence of God, the anointing. It is a relationship person to person with him. Where you speak to him, he speaks to you. He speaks to you as a father. He speaks to you as a friend. He speaks to you as a king. He speaks to you as the Lord, as a commander, a comforter, a teacher, the healer, a provider. He speaks to you as a lover. And what happens when these things begin to happen? You see clearer. Your sight is totally different. True sight comes with power of hope. The power to position you into your destiny. And everything begins to fall right in order. Boom. Now I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 5. That's why we worship. We get connected. Without worship, you can't get connected. First John chapter 5. Ah, oh, yes. Verse 18. Let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. Does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you will not willfully sin unless you've been disconnected. Remember, that's what pride does. It brings you over the boundaries so you get disconnected. Then you come out of head knowledge and lose heart knowledge. We know that whoever has been born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself in the boundaries. And the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Who's the wicked one? Satan's kingdom. <laughs> and we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, distractions, and expose false influences and false doctrines. Amen? So you don't get caught up in that. Maintain the power of the knowledge of Christ. Maintain connection. The Lord gave us the formula of denying ourselves, picking up the cross, fighting and following. Without a fight, there is no follow. 
Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word. We pray today, Lord, that the seed that you've imparted in us will grow and bear fruit for your glory, that counsel, correction, and direction will come to each and every one of us, even conviction, and so that our heart may be turned to your will, to your power, to your presence, and to your spirit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.